Hi boys and girls, welcome back to the Parsha Studio. In Parsha Re'e, Moshe retells the Jewish people which animals, fish, and birds are kosher and which are not. And that's why we are going to make a bird seed mosaic today. Here are the supplies we will need. The printed bird template, a piece of cardboard, Elmer's liquid glue, a glue stick, an X-Acto knife, a piece of ribbon, a hole puncher or sharp pen for poking holes, black rice, green lentils, red lentils, popcorn kernels, and wheat kernels. You'll also find a small paintbrush handy. Let's begin. Glue the template to the piece of cardboard using the glue stick. This will lend it some sturdiness. As mentioned, the Parsha recaps some laws of kosher. Unlike mammals, where the Torah gives two clear signs through which to know if the animal is kosher or not, the Torah itself does not give any signs for how to tell whether or not a bird is kosher. Instead, it simply lists a whole bunch of non-kosher birds. Use an X-Acto knife to trim off any paper that sticks past the sides of the cardboard. Next, punch two holes at the top, a few inches apart. Alternatively, you can wait until the entire thing is finished and punch the holes then, which we did. Next, apply liquid glue to the borders of the bird's wings and tail, then cover the glue trail with grains of black rice in a single file line so that this black line of rice is thin. Do the same for the rest of the outline of the bird, then do the same for the stems of the leaves. Even though the Torah itself doesn't give us signs of a kosher bird, there are commentaries on the Torah that shed more light on this. By looking at the birds that the Torah forbids, they find a few patterns that are common among these forbidden birds, including that they are birds of prey. This means they seize and eat other animals cruelly. The Ramban shares with us a very special idea. He says, the reason Hashem asks us not to eat these cruel animals is so that we don't absorb these qualities into ourselves. What does that mean? Here's an example to help us understand. Imagine you ate way too much carrots. Do you know what would eventually happen? Your skin would actually start to turn a bit orange. Or imagine you listen to a song again and again and again. What do you think would happen? The song would get stuck in your head for a while. When you're done with the black rice, fill in each section of the picture with a different type of grain, going according to the numbers. This is kind of like a paint by number activity, except instead of painting, we are gluing. Squeeze some glue on the wings where it says number one. Then use a small paintbrush to evenly spread and coat the area. Pour red lentils across the section, then pour off the excess. Whatever doesn't touch the glue will automatically fall off. Back to our examples. Or imagine you sat down to read a book and got lost in the story. You almost feel like you are in the story because it is so absorbing. Repeat this process for each section of the picture. Glue on the remaining grains according to the numbers. Glue popcorn kernels wherever you see a number two, green lentils wherever you see a number four, and wheat kernels wherever you see a number five, which is the whole background. So back to the food we eat. Not only does our food affect us physically, but also spiritually. When the Torah tells us not to eat birds of prey because they are cruel animals, this is because Hashem doesn't want us to digest something that has a cruel nature. After all, that cruelty can be passed on to us just by eating it. Even though the mitzvah of kosher is a chok, which means that it's a type of mitzvah that is not logical, a mitzvah that is essentially beyond our understanding, nevertheless, this explanation can help us to appreciate one reason why it's important to be careful with this mitzvah. What is one way you can try to be more careful with your kashras? Besides food, we can also apply this lesson to other things we take in through our other senses. What we see and what we hear affects us much more than we may realize. For example, when we listen to a song, read a book, or watch a video, the images and messages go into our minds and psyches and affect the way we think and see life. For this reason, it's important to be intentional about what influences we allow into our minds and hearts. What is one way you can be more careful about what you watch or listen to? When the whole picture is complete, place four heavy objects on the corners of the picture so it doesn't curve up while drying. Once it's completely dry, punch two holes if you haven't already. Then thread a ribbon through the holes and tie it securely at each end. Your birdseed mosaic is now ready. And I don't know if you noticed, but it's also supposed to be a bird feeder. So now go hang it on a tree and watch the birds come. Please like and subscribe and we hope to see you again next week.